So this week, Kitty's unfortunately Uncle Spur isn't feeling too hot. And by not feeling too hot, I basically mean like I feel like one of those beanbag chairs that's been stuffed full of puke and human excrement and then kicked down the stairs and then sat on by James Corden. I've got a severe case of the sniffles and my head basically feels like it is 100% filled with snot. I've got the worst migraine, basically like the most terrible hangover in existence, except with none of the fun alcohol drinking bit beforehand. <coughs> But you know what, Uncle Spurt is made of stern stuff, so I'm going to pull myself together, stop my whining, and deliver to you the half ass tech coverage that you're possibly all used to by now. After last week's drilling and banging fest, I really am riding the crest of that high quality content production wave. Tech Spurt Weekly! Now the big phone launch this week was ASUS's ROG Phone 5S and 5S Pro, a minor upgrade to the original ROG 5 and ROG 5 Pro gaming smartphones. These are two more metal beefcakes with a near 6.8 inch 144Hz AMOLED screen, this time powered by the Snapdragon 888 Plus, and that's backed by up to 18 gigs of DDR5 RAM, while the original topped off at a paltry 16 gigs. Psh, what a goddamn lightweight. You got the usual smorgasbord of gaming features and those Air Trigger 5 ultrasonic shoulder buttons. You got a whopping great 6,000 milliamp battery with 65 watt fast charge support, and that Pro model sports a second mini screen around the back. That's probably about as much use as a eunuch in a brothel, but whatever, it's your money, you do what you like. I'm going to be much more sensible and just spend my hard-earned cash on this charming Kurosu statuette, a snip at just 215 of your British pounds. That definitely seems like a good deal, right? My head is so full of mucus that I can't really think anymore. Uh, this week we also saw lots of leaks ahead of the fresh Poco M4 Pro launch which is happening next Tuesday and the leaks seem to confirm our suspicions that it is essentially just a rebranded Redmi Note 11. That 6.6 inch IPS screen sports a central selfie cam orifice while around back you've got a plastic finish and a proper big boy camera watch housing a dual lens setup. That's a 50 megapixel primary shooter and an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle effort. So same as the Redmi Note 11, a Dimensity 810 chipset most likely runs the show on the Poco M4 Pro. Uh, and you've got a 5000 milliamp battery, hopefully given all day play. You could also expect the Poco M4 Pro to cost under 200 quid, rather bargainous. I mean, with that kind of hot saving, maybe I'll buy two of those Kurosu statues. And I'll hopefully bring you some hot Poco action next Tuesday. That was too e enthusiastic. And Asus has been a proper busy little beaver this week, not just launching those ROG phones, but also the fresh new Vivo Book 13 Slate OLED. Looks like it could be strong competition for the likes of the Microsoft Surface tabs. And according to Asus, this is the world's first 13.3 inch OLED Windows detachable laptop. Is it a tablet? Is it a laptop? It's bloody both. Amazing. You got support for the Asus Pen 2.0 stylus, which is very stylus-like. That detachable keyboard is pretty comprehensive. You've got all the function keys and all that kind of good stuff. And that Full HD screen supports a good bit of Dolby Vision action. There's lots of wavy graphs here to show how it's really good. Uh, it's powered by an Intel Pentium uh, Silver N6000 bit of Pentium action blast from the past. And despite the skinny build, you've got two USB-C ports and also a micro SD memory card reader. So overall, sounds rather spiff and hopefully bring you a full review of that bad boy soon. Netflix Games also launched this Wednesday, offering a selection of just five titles to play via that Netflix app, including a couple of Stranger Things efforts. You've got Shooting Hoops, Teeter Up and Card Blast. So much fun, your rectum may just suddenly prolapse. Unless you're an iPhone user, that is because so far Netflix Games is Android only. So go cry into your big, shiny, stupidly expensive house brick. But hopefully Netflix Games should be coming to iOS soon and hopefully that catalogue of games will expand rather rapidly as well. As much as I love a bit of teeter up action. Personally, I'm just hoping that they come out with Squid Game The Game where you get to wrestle with a big, fat, sweaty, naked dude in a golden, shiny cat mask. Now, before I politely say goodnight and pass out face first on the studio floor, there's probably just about enough time for the stunning bit of self-harm that is viewer comments. Viewer comments. <laughs> Um, on the subject of the bathroom based fun times, by the way, uh, that shiz is still going on. Happy, happy, joy, joy, kill me now. But thankfully, because I basically slept through the entire day, uh, it's now night time. So uh, they've all buggered off. So no banging or scraping or drilling. To interrupt us, you'll be able to hear every sniffle and snort and mucusy clearing of my throat nice and clearly. Uh, Stuart says, hi, Chris, we're having our bathroom replaced in a couple of weeks. Please tell me it's not that bad. Better get some super strength spiced rum in. 
But yeah, I mean, it was definitely a lot worse when we had to get our bathroom done uh, in our porky wee flat that we used to live in before, where basically we only had the one bathroom, so I spent a couple of days shitting in a bucket, which was charming. But yeah, rum is 100% a good idea. Uncle Spurt endorses this plan. Remember, kiddies drink responsibly. Pugwash says, will next week's episode be from the bathroom? Well, at this bloody rate, it probably will be, yeah, um, but I, I wouldn't subject you guys to that, not unless I had a particularly virulent vindaloo. Uh, Richard says, hi Chris, hope the bathroom is finished by next week's highly anticipated video, very kind of you sir. Uh, what colour suite did you install, perhaps a nice 70s jade green or mocha brown? I mean, you've got to love that 1970s style, you know, you just got to wonder, did everyone in the 1970s just smoke so much that they effectively blinded themselves for the entire decade? Uh, next, Brendan says, uh, the Redmi 11 Pro and the Pro Plus both have the same Dimensity 920 chipset. Uh, yes, they do indeed, that's correct. Uh, it's one of the early rumours and leaks that didn't get it on the money at all. Hope to actually get my mitts on uh, those uh, those phones at some point to do a proper bit of hands-on action for you lovely folk. Uh, but of course, bit of Poco action next week. Fingers crossed, so stay tuned for that. Uh, Josh says, that Yorkshire pudding wrap sounds f***ing amazing. Just give me that stuffed with chips and sausage and a big bowl of gravy to dip it in. I mean, that is proper food porn right there. It's, it, I've got no appetite. I've literally choked down some tomato and chicken soup today. And that's friggin' it. I didn't even have any caffeine earlier apart from the stuff that they load into the many many tablets that i've been shoving down my throat so my body's just like what on earth is going on uh, donald says i live in hope that some of these companies will make a normal sized phone someday is there any word of any compact devices in the pipeline uh, I, I wish me i really do uh, i think the only compact one that's in the uh, pipeline right now is possibly samsung's galaxy s21 Fan Edition, the FE model, which everyone was like, will they, won't they? Apparently it might be coming out at CES 2022 now, so fingers crossed. It's just especially annoying that the, uh, of course, the good old Pixel 6 is such a big bump in size over previous generations. We don't even have that to consider. So yeah, us hamster-handed users will unfortunately just have to suffer on a bit longer. Though I'm starting to get used to it. I'm using the Pixel 6 Pro at the moment and it's fine. I'm just used to clutching everything with two hands. And I do mean everything, ladies. Uh, oh god, um, <laughs> uh, Lee says, hoping to hear your thoughts on live action Cowboy Bebop next Friday, are you excited for it or dreading it? Um, well, I, I gotta admit, originally I was about as excited about it as a turkey waiting for Christmas, because the original anime is just, I mean, it's just gold star, you know, I wouldn't change a single freaking thing in, in that show, it's just perfection. And remakes, of course, we all know how remakes usually go. But then the creators went and shared the opening credits of the uh, the new live action show a couple of weeks back and I've got to admit I was getting like proper goosebumps and stuff. That's probably just because of course used the awesome tank theme tune again. And frankly I could just listen to that song on loop all friggin day long. So I've upgraded my uh, feelings from slight despair to actually kind of anticipating it now but we'll see I guess. Oh, that last bout of drugs is starting to kick in now so I'm actually feeling quite way we can get through this we can do it man um Ophel says from one maiden fan to another how do you feel about the new album senjutsu i personally feel it's absolutely brilliant um yeah i mean with maiden i you know i'm really on board with their older stuff that was basically what got me into metal you know the fact they used to have that on the friggin radio all the time uh, which was the only way i used to listen to music back in the day i didn't have a cd player i didn't have a tape deck until i was about like 13 or something uh, so yeah that solidly got me into that stuff senjutsu yeah i mean it's you know i, I don't spin it very often but it does have a, a a couple of stone cold bangers on there. Don't spin it very often. You can't really see that anymore, can you? Don't don't tap it on Deezer very often anymore. Showing what a friggin' old twat I am. Uh, Pomerau says, shame the second part of the comment section wasn't in any English that a 60 year old could follow. Uh, <laughs> I mean, mate, I'm, I'm 39 and I haven't got a fucking clue what's going on. Uh, oh, fuck, an actual uh, tech question. Um, Shifter says, have you been using the Pixel 6 Pro enough to judge how its battery charge lasts compared with other flagships. Uh, yeah, I mean, this thing's got the longevity of Ron Jeremy, basically. It's, you know, I've, I've never managed to run it down. Yesterday, I got up at 6 a.m., staggered back home again at midnight, which is probably one of the reasons why I'm feeling a bit rough today as well. And, you know, even on days where I'm out and about using it as a sat-nav uh, for a good hour or two, um, you know, lots of camera play, a bit of gaming, a bit of media streaming and all that stuff, I've never managed to run it dry. Uh, so no complaints whatsoever. I know that one particular US YouTuber has uh, had issues with it. As far as I'm aware, it's just this one guy because that's the only name that I've had uh, touted from people who are uh, disappointed with the battery life on the Pixel. Uh, series smartphone so that's that one complaint seems to have snowballed now into the pixel 6 series smartphones battery life sucks 
Um, Sim, uh, Sim Vive actually from House Music All Night Long, great name by the way, uh, says most other reviewers have said that the battery life on the Pixel 6 is poor, so that's really put me off getting them. I've had the opposite uh, experience. I've spoken with loads of uh, my fellow UK tech journal nerd journalist uh, friends, and they've all said it's friggin' great on the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro. They've had no troubles whatsoever. So again, it's just, as far as I can tell, one or two US YouTubers at most seem to have uh, complained about it. And now all of a sudden, everyone's complaining about it, allegedly. So it just goes to show just how much influence just one or two popular voices on this platform can really have. It can mix, basically make or break uh, something which is slightly terrifying, but no more terrifying than most of the world right now, to be honest. I'd recommend just cowering under your duvet with a crate of the finest booze you can get your mitts on, basically, because, yeah, let's just, let's just be done with uh, existence until maybe February, March time. Come creeping back on out once springtime hits and it's not bloody dark all day long. And now I'm just ranting about nothing at all. This really is the drugs kicking in. I don't know what is coming out of my mouth. I hope it's not utter bullshit. Uh, moving on, uh, Woolly says, I challenge you to make a video without saying shenanigans. Well, I've already f***ed that one up then. Uh, Baldyhead says, in the early 80s, there was also Automan, which was a crime-fighting computer-generated man. Now this, i got to see, because some of that early CG is just absolutely wild. In fact, did they even have CG in the 80s? Like, what are we talking here? Is this guy basically just seven triangles with a smiley face on it? Gonna Google this shiz. Oh, I see. So I, I don't think he's actually uh, computer generated. Well, I don't think they've actually computer generated him, have they? They've basically just slapped a guy in some funky, like, disco outfit covered in, uh, in fairy lights. That sounds right up my street, though. I'm well up for any kind of 1980s weird ass sci fi, so I will definitely try and check that out. Uh, Leaky Pipe says Have you ever seen an episode of Top Gear? I've never sat through an entire episode, certainly not with the original uh, trio lineup thing, because uh, I've got to admit, I don't find Cos particularly exciting. I find them about, about as exciting as kettles, like they serve an essential purpose, but I wouldn't sit down for an hour and listen to Jeremy Clarkson banging on about the latest super duper kettle while Richard Hammond pretends to laugh at all of his jokes. I literally chose my current car based <laughs> on two factors, uh, the first being how much baby sh and booze can I cram into the boot, and the second being if we got into some sort of fender bender on the M25, is me and my entire family going to be reduced to just a pulpy mush? I started watching it when they changed the lineup and Rory Reid was one of the co-hosts because I actually used to work with him on Recombu. Uh, in fact, he was there until he quit to start the, the Top Kit gig. It was ever so slightly surreal going from uh, having him sat, you know, right there opposite me on the desks to all of a sudden being on, you know, national television. But yeah, if, if you are interested in cars, highly recommend going and checking out the Auto Trader uh, YouTube channel, which he helps to uh, produce all the content for. He is shit hot at the video stuff. Like, he basically helped to teach me quite a lot of the stuff that I know, but don't hold that against him. Uh, so apparently, Erinsborough is actually an anagram of neighbours. Um, yeah, duh. slightly embarrassed that I didn't, <laughs> didn't recognise that at all uh, last week. Can't even blame it on the whiskey because I wasn't even drinking last week. I was just down and shed loads of caffeine to get through it all. Okay, just a couple more comments because I really do feel like my head is going to burst and shower this entire room with just pus and snot. So uh, that wouldn't be great. Uh, Gor Gorgonism's Truth, uh, apologies if I completely mauled that, says, keep your face on the thumbnails. Uh, I mean, I gotta admit, I never thought I'd have people asking for more of my face on this channel. And last up, the estimator says, infantile, needless, gratuitous, bad language, garrulous, Geordie BS, machine gun paste confusion. <sighs> Look, you can call me infantile, you can call me confused, you can call me a baldy short ass. all of these things, very, very true indeed. But please don't ever call me a Geordie. I'm from Sunderland, I'm a Mackham, I'm not a friggin' mag, all right? I mean, that's just hurtful, that's just straight up racism, frankly. Uh, the estimator continues, unfortunately. Uh, you know what? Nah, there are better reviewers. See ya. Unsubscribed! All in caps. Very dramatic. Uh, no, no, please don't go estimator. Please, please stay with me now. I'm down on my knees. I mean, I'm not actually down on my knees. I don't think I'd get off the floor if I actually got down on the floor uh, right now. I'm just sort of squatting awkwardly. Please, please don't go estimator. No, I'm just f***ing with you. Off your toddle. And frankly, for calling me a Geordie, banned for life from the channel anyway. So that is, uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed that every single week I do a Textbook Weekly, it seems to be the worst episode I've ever done. Uh, so bar set seriously low now. Can I limbo under that next week? Well, you'll have to join me again Friday at noon to find out. And uh, next week, if I'm still actually alive and breathing, uh, what have we got? So we've got the Poco uh, lift embargo thing. 
on the Tuesday, so stay tuned, as I say, for the, the hot poco action. That's all that I can see in the calendar for now, thank Christ. It's starting to calm down quite considerably uh, after a good old October. I've got lots of other hot content to uh, spaff at your face as well, including my, finally, my full in-depth Google Pixel 6 Pro review, using it for pretty much a full-on month now. So if for whatever reason you're still actually watching this and you haven't pork subscribed and that notifications bell already, please do do that. I really am sorry. It's not usually quite this shit except for last week and, and most other weeks. But have yourselves a fan bloody tastic uh, weekend. Hope you're all feeling a lot better than I am. Hopefully see you out the other end. Love you!